What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Essential Scares Podcast, the only show that dares to ask the question, is it essential? I am your host, Corbin, and with me, as always, is Bobby. Post one in the chat if you do not want us to record and review the Resident Evil show. Please, God, Christ, no. (laughs) And Alan. Hail Ratma. (laughs) We have got a great show for you today. We are going to be discussing one from last year that we missed, VHS 94. But first, Bobby has a spoiler warning. I do. This will serve as a first one and only spoiler warning for the movie from last year, VHS 94. If you do not want this movie spoiled for you, or if you do not want the joke that I was going to use spoiled by Alan in the beginning of this episode, please skip to the time code or show notes at the end of this podcast uh, (laughs) in in the description for essential spoiler-free discussion. This anthology has gotten me thinking hey fuck the police and hail ratma ellen <laughs> i love that that's a perfect that's a perfect spoiler warning what are you talking about um so this this film uh is an anthology that gives us a few different um not necessarily connected horror stories um with an overarching kind of interstitial story between them we start with Uh, The story of a reporter going and finding Ratma. We then transition into... Is that the subject is next? I'm misremembering. What's the next one? The subject was the second to last one. Fuck, what was the next one? I don't even remember. That's not good. Um, It was... Regardless. Dude, it was The Wake. (laughs) Oh, the wake that was, really <laughs> which is good. really good, which lot. is a really good one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we have a, a wake story that gets very spooky and creepy, um, and then we uh, transition into the cop story. I I don't remember oh, the, this movie. Yeah, the apparently, subject. yeah, <laughs> the subject. Okay. Uh, the long and the short of it, this film has these different types of stories that not necessarily are connected, but are, they're like really good snippets of horror ideas that necessarily, that that don't necessarily need to be their own full length film, but in like 20 minute or so chunks kind of work as like a good spooky, scary thing, um, that are connected by this cop story. That's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how you guys thought about that more than anything so uh i have two things to say right off the bat uh first of all i alan you know you've been doing the synopses for a little while now i just want to say i love how every time you do your best to summarize the movie without spoiling the movie it despite it being a post spoiler warning that's totally. always that's always very amusing to me. Spoil the mover. Spoil the movie, dude. Just <laughs> yeah. spoil it. It's every fine. every week I'm waiting for Alan to say like all of like the plot points, but he's always like he's always like back of the book style of synopsis. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just I don't know. Just spoil uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give it all away. <laughs> but we're no, gonna dude. Yeah. <laughs> I know, no, we'll get into it. It makes the three of our jobs easier <laughs> if you just do it now. <laughs> to i want to make it harder on, on specifically you bobby yeah, just that enough. makes sense that no makes that sense. no that makes a lot of sense yeah uh, I'm, I'm big into that second so i've seen i've seen all of all of vhs movies i love found footage i love anthologies vhs is like one of my favorite things uh the interstitial story for vhs 94 is just not very interesting <laughs> i don't think it was very good I have a it's question. kind of boring like no yes are you telling me are you telling me right now you yep. don't like the hit film 8mm starring nicholas cage and joaquin phoenix you you crazy person i do like that hit film <laughs> <laughs> but i legit yeah the great movie, great movie. <laughs> but the hit film eight millimeter successfully bettered by the hit horror film uh sinister insidious sinister. oh yeah sinister. <laughs> that's the one there <laughs> um that entire that concept is repeated through all four VHS films. In this one, perhaps to the worst. <laughs> uh, Alan, what were you, what were you gonna say? <laughs> so, do the other VHS films kind of follow a similar pathing with this one, where there's so, like a story between the stories? Yes, there's always a story between the stories. 
Okay. Um, but before there was also sort of this like story between the movies. So there was actually like movie to movie through line a little bit. Hmm. And they're similar to this movie where there's like, you know, they watch the VHSs, it like messes with them. You know, there's like a cult that's like got the VHSs going like that's kind of similar to the other movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but with the other movies, it's, it's a little more like the second one, I believe, uh, somebody like breaks into a house and there's like a dead guy. And then, uh, like that had been watching VHS there's like piles of tapes and like the, the, the guy who broke in is like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the tapes. And so it's just like him, like watching the tapes and then each in between, there's like little spooky things that happen, you know? And like, I think that this one the interstitial story was just like it kind of never was like scary so it didn't it didn't ramp the tension in between stories and it also was the storytelling of it was a little bit confusing to me because it's like it also wasn't interesting it's like i never really cared like what was going to happen in between yeah there was no stakes with these officers that we saw between the shots like yeah there was going to be an officer who watched a VHS and his eyes were going to pop out, whatever. Like it, it just never really like, it never did anything to amplify. I I don't know that that necessarily amplified what they were trying to do with this film at all. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. So the cop who who they kill at the end, they say that he was in. Yeah. 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 They say that he was in the vampire story. Was he the police officer? Yes. Yes. Okay, that was I also not didn't entirely make that clear. connection. I I, I did I agree. I didn't notice until that until they were like, "You were in that last one," and then I was like, "Yeah, I guess he was." <laughs> well, yep. well, and here's the thing: like, I I thought he was somebody else. I thought he was one of the fucking Chud militia members. Also, hey, this movie is fucking sick for that reason, right? First off, oh that like, final that final short, hell of oh, very uh... so good. <laughs> Yeah. Based, so based, it yeah. based, based in the most bread pill possible. Yeah. Bobby, Fuck I anybody. knew you would, you would appreciate those LARPers more than I. No, literally, no, as, I, I was listen, watch, as I was that, watching, that I was vampire, like, this is going to be Bobby's favorite. That, <laughs> no, well, yep. here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. My wife is currently watching True Blood, so I'm on a pro vampire kick on Love top vampires. of yeah. on top of the fact that like the vampire stops a terrorist, uh, an alt right terrorist attack. Twelve out of ten. 15 out of 10. I if we definitely were just like, ranking that sketch, Bobby, it's essential already. The vampire design, by the way, oh. is so cool. Oh. So just I would, like, I'd love when to. Come, when, it, when, it, when it comes out from the fucking cellar and just like, or, yeah. or the, 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 the attic's like, Rah! yeah. Like it's fucking sick. Yeah. Oh. So I'd love to just uh, go like story by, by story. Sketch. Maybe. Love that. Love that. Love uh, that. Love but, that. So before we go into the ver- the very first one, Ratma. Do you guys have anything else you want to say about the interstitial stories? Because I think we yeah, can just, I, like, I do. <laughs> be done with it after. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Bobby. You go first. No, no. I, I, I would say that while it is probably not the best, I think that it does a, it does a, it does its job. Where like there was never a point where I was like, okay, like they, they, they set the scene of like, okay, so there's like these TVs all over the place and they're doing this and yada, yada, yada. It doesn't conclude correctly, right? Because you're expecting there to be like this like internet-based like thing happening. Yep. Um, it's Like why people are picking out their own eyes. But like, I think that you follow it enough looking for it. I think the ending is what really st- spoil like ruins it like if they would have been able to like really nail like stick the landing there it would have been a good job but like the fact that there's like yeah we fucking make snuff films and sell illegal videotapes and we're gonna kill you SWAT team guy right now and like that was the ending I was like okay I guess that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dialogue just it, it that dialogue <laughs> at the end is so awful mm-hmm like it's, it's like the it worst lines in a genuine. Borderlands game. Like yeah. well, every bad line in a Borderlands game, that's the end. Of did this you guys movie. ever play Manhunt, the game, the video yeah. game Manhunt? Oh, yeah. It reminds me of Manhunt. Of just like, I, yeah, I, let's I, fucking I kill this guy you played, right oh, now. What's the name of the guy. Uh, 
It's there Manhunt. A... You're thinking of the game no, Manhunt no, by, a by, one by that Rockstar. I'm of. The game Manhunt by <sighs> Rockstar is starring Guy from uh, Succession. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the game, but it's um, not So, right what I will say about the interstitial scenes that I really loved and that I, it actually made me dislike them more is that the beginning of it I quite liked, and yeah. then the segue into the first short is perfect they're they're going through the compound uh the the swat member who is videotaping is like looking around and one of the tvs has the news on he goes into the news it zooms in and then you watch the news and then that transitions into the next story and like that was so cool and so well done and then they never hit a transition quite that powerful again after that. Mm. And I think that that kind of like, that yeah. brought it down for me after that. Cause my expectations were immediately raised and then they just threw them away <laughs> right away. Well, and, <laughs> and you can tell without like, they never really like screw with you. Cause like the first curse word they throw in there is censored. And then all of a sudden the second one's not, and you're like, what the fuck? And then you're just fine with it going forward. Like, yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had a a random didn't pull me out of the film, but a like hmm, that's weird. Uh, the shitty generic metal music that's playing when the SWAT team is on the way. It to made me think of Halo compound. Combat Evolved. <laughs> it, I guess. <laughs> Where there's no, just and it's just... I'm the bargu. <laughs> it's just this so music bad. is your legacy, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I I get it. I get I, it. Yeah, they did, well I mean this movie this movie did not necessarily have a massive budget. So like paying for the rights for like let the bodies hit the floor or some no, shit was no. not in the in the cards. I one get of my, it. But like one of, one of the best just, compliments yeah. I ever gave to an album is there's an al- there's an album by the band The Plot in You. And it's the first album they got before really hitting it big. The the album is called uh, uh Happiness and Self-Destruction. And I described this album as this is the album that they would place when when a as a uh uh as as a SWAT team would write a drug den, and like like there was like a very generic feeling to it. I feel like those like that really hit. That was like yeah, I could see a I could see some band I've never heard of like being played in a SWAT vein as they're going to go raid sure. a fucking yeah yeah. So um, the only other thing with the interstitial bits is it's like. I just wanted something more out of them than like feeling like elongated transitions into the next sketch. Like I don't this so this was my first VHS film. I've not seen any of the previous 3 uh, that have come out. So I didn't I didn't necessarily have expectations, but I feel like if, you know, I I we we mentioned like there's more to these in in the other VHS films as Corbin has explained to me. And it makes me really sad, or at least more than this. So I just, I would have wanted I, more. That's all. I think the other, I would actually say, what I'll say is that the other ones actually had less going on in between, but the scares were higher. And this one felt like they wanted to like pump the mo- the franchise up to the next level by having a more complicated story in between. Mm-hmm. And that was like the downfall because the other movies have okay. a very, very simple story in between the shorts. Like it's all about the shorts. I mean, I would probably appreciate that more then, because it's you're getting to you're getting to the the actual content that is of substance, as opposed to like, I mean, there's not a ton of time, but in a hundred and something minute run fill run time, there's twenty minutes. I mean, there's there's an entire short's worth of time that could be dedicated to a dedicated short than yeah. <laughs> this kind of useless interstitial bits. So yeah. they really I would, didn't. I wouldn't say it's useless. Like that's maybe a bit harsh. I, yeah, I I would say that the as the movie wears on, the transitional bits get less and less interesting as they get more and much sure. more and more lore heavy. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree issue. with I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah, but yeah. let's get into the first thing. The first one Absolutely. is the rat. Let's man. let's yeah. hail the rat. Yeah, it's, man. It's, it's called it's called Storm Drain. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh yeah, so what did what did we think of, uh, what did we think of this one? Well, first off, hail Ratma. Hail Ratma. As one does as have to hail Ratma. Yeah. Uh I wanna start with the ending, because that shit 
made me go from being like for the for video viewers viewers here to being like here just like (laughs) (laughs) that was like the ending the ending made me laugh in comparison to the entirety like i think this is probably the best out of all the four um it 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 made me both terrified and laugh out loud by the end of it i I jumped like two or three times when this sketch was going on like they got me good with the jump scares like i will say i i I only jumped during the second the second one the second is the one where they like they the guy turns the camera and the dude is just standing there is that the one that got you no 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 i jumped the second sequence oh the second scout gotcha 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 it was the most obvious bit where you would jump during the second bit is where I jumped. Uh, but uh, this movie didn't make me jump, but there was plenty of moments where I was just, I, I, I steadily pulled myself away from my screen. Just yeah. be like, yeah, it, it was very it, good. It absolutely holds the best tension out of all of them. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like, for better and for worse, but as a fan of the genre it was all better for me it was kind of like the typical found footage style of scares Mm -hmm. um but but done very well um you know i i love that they had like they had a good excuse for why they're filming they had a good monster i love cryptids so that like really got to me like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they hold mm -hmm. they hold the tension so so well like it was kind of everything that you want out of found footage and in just a clean like 15 minutes which was awesome um and it was also like really gory in a at first scary but then in a kind of hilarious way like Bobby said so it's like yeah. that short manages to like start out pretty funny with the news segments ratchet up slowly to being really scary and then like it lets go loose of its own horror by giving you a little laugh at the end to like ease you into the next segment like it's such a good anthology piece whoever directed that bit really i think has a future yeah, like he, I, I agree like Underst- they know how- it's an understanding of horror and comedy being two sides of the same <laughs> coin displayed expertly on yeah. in a in a quick easy digestible 20 minutes like what the, what what's it called storm drain storm drain yeah yeah directed by chloe okuno chloe okuno's got a future ahead of her but like that I, I, I'll, I'll say that right now i'll watch the, whatever next movie she's attached to like that shit sounds fucking dope that she knew how to do it that was her first that looks like that was her first thing that she did she's got That's a, a hell of a she has she has a movie called watcher that is currently doing festivals right now it's her only movie. What's so, it called? Watcher. Is it? Is it also? No, she also wasn't. She also apparently directed a, a movie in twenty fourteen called Slut. Is it? A, is it like a short or is that a whole movie? It wasn't on Wikipedia. It's on. It's on IMDb. Hmm. Either way. Either way, she's got a movie coming out, and I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. A, 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 as yeah. well. I, yes. <laughs> Well, and, and I mentioned before, like, this movie had, there's no way it had a massive budget. This is a Shutter original, even just watching it. Like, you can kind of tell, like, this didn't necessarily, it also didn't necessarily need to have a huge budget to be effective at what it was trying to get through. Um, but I feel like this sketch is a very good representation of, you don't necessarily need a massive budget to make something that is not only scary, but good and captivating. Like, this sketch from the onset makes you... It, it, it It's like, hey, idiot, pay attention to me. Like, it, it catches you real quick with that, like, super cheesy news thing where you're, like, you're rolling your eyes like, oh, my God, yeah, of course. I, I, I You've seen these newscasters. You yep. know exactly what they're like. And then just seeing, like, this, this, new, this, this journalist have to go do the shitty job she doesn't want to do... She's to then only get caught feet. up in a shitty scenario like it's it's expertly crafted and done just it, it threads the needle perfectly yeah so good i almost 
I almost wish we were rating these individual sketches on their own <laughs> and then giving a cumulative score based. I mean, we kind of are at the end of the day when we give our cumulative well, score yeah, of this. Well, well, well Alan, but... the, the honestly is we could we could Rotma these scales on a scale of Correct. Rotma to Rotma. Exactly. Hail Rotma, yeah. Hail. Hail, yeah. Hail. yeah. As, and as naturally, this gets a Rotma out of Rotma. Yeah, and yeah. Is which Rotma. is which, as yeah. we know, is the best Rotma available. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Should we talk about Rotma since like we've said Rotma so many times now at this point? I didn't recognize that 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 that's where this this uh, this cryptid came from, but it's fucking sick. I uh, also didn't like yeah like I've been seeing it on Twitter and TikTok for the last yeah. year, and I I didn't watch this until now. And as soon as he crawled out of the drain, it's like, hey, <laughs> I know that oh, guy. Dude, it's, it's the thing from the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that guy. That's a great design. <laughs> Actually, I, I will fully admit that, like, I like when I saw the drawing, I was like, oh, cool. We're seeing the thing from TikTok. Like, that was, that was like. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize at first. <laughs> the, when the, when Rama comes out of the storm drain, it gave me, like, alien vibes. Because there's that shot in Alien yes. of like the like slow, like the alien turning its head and like uh-huh. looking at the camera and like it, it's. Have you seen the original a, Alien, Alan? Yeah. Okay. I cool. covered it for thirty three days of horror last year. Which, by the way, check out our letterbox. It's a grand old time. We're gonna be doing that again this year. Um, but it it's it's like a good homage to that. It's a very like it feels like oh this person understands how to show yeah. her villain for the first well, time. Even. It, Ratma's Not entire so. design is very xenomorph inspired. It feels like it's oh, like, got the elongated head, the acid. Like, yeah, I I think that that feeling that you're getting, like, I think that that's very intentional. I think that that's wrapped up mm-hmm. into the entire creature, which is great. I mean, you know, one of the best creature designs of all time, the xenomorph. So, you know what this this movie also had it, it um in legitimately only the best ways this short remind me of brawhead rex like okay, which yeah it, it, it's, I, there's there, yeah. there's very there's very little that this can like there's there's positives for but just the fact that there's like a weird religious element to it and like there's like a yeah there's like a priest in there and he's like yeah dude like there i don't know why i was like oh yeah there's like a, a human-esque looking demon thing and like I was just like, yeah, this is like the best bits of Rawhead Rex. It's I don't like, know what. Yeah. Rawhead Rex would be a great found footage short. That yes. would be great, like oh, yeah. a fifteen minute Rawhead Rex. Like, yeah. I'm there for that. Actually, like, <laughs> yeah. and five minute, five minutes of it is just pissing on a priest. Hell yeah! Of course. Think about it. How yeah. else would you use your time? Yeah. Rawhead Rex? Yeah. <laughs> You've got twenty minutes, minimum five of those, yeah, or just yeah. stream. Oh yeah. I, I, listen, listen. I'll I'll, I'll take a, a max ten. Just just of all. Like, oh my god, he's still pissing on the priest. You can play that. It's like too many cooks, but a piss scene. Like you yeah. can make it oh, work. It's definitely too, too many cooks. Too much piss. Too much piss. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. So, uh, the next, the next segment, uh, in, in this anthology is The Empty Wake. Uh, this, I, I like this one quite a lot. Uh, yeah, I do kind too. Of, I liked that it, again, had a good excuse for the cameras, right? Two cameras, stationary, which I think stationary cameras and found footage have a lot of capability to be super scary. Because you're mm-hmm. kind of always, like you as the viewer you're like looking all over right because you're always like okay oh, what's what's changed you're waiting like, between for it, these? yeah yeah and this one kind of plays on that a little bit by like almost nothing ever, <laughs> ever happens on the stationary cams um and then like you know wakes are you know the whole like funeral home thing that already has a lot of room to be scary as a base level it's an overnight wake for just no reason because it's scary like um did you guys like this one or did you not like this one? Personally, I liked it a lot. I Same. I don't think that I do not think this could exist as a full length because nothing changes and I think that's the point. Like for like a yep. 15 20 minute short, the fact that nothing changes at 90% of the time, it's mostly her just being like, "What the fuck is going on? This is so like her own legitimate fears about like nobody's showing up to this fucking like this wake, which is like 
we're all in our 30s. We're approaching the first big chunk of time in which wakes happen for our lives, right? We're all in that bit for us. And, like, they're always full. All the time. Like, period. And, like, the fact that it's empty is scary enough as is. Uh, Right? Absolutely. Like, it was, there was a degree of scare, like, even before they even thought about touching on, like, the supernatural elements of it, it's like, this guy just scary just by itself, like, just conceptually. Yeah. <laughs> There's a corpse that we know is fucked up in that thing. Like, right. yeah. And nobody's coming to see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only thing I would say about this is it almost suffers because of how good Storm Drain is. Like, Storm Drain to right me is, is so good yeah. that it's hard. It, it, any of these sketches would be, I would, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't say I think less of them, but like, because I enjoyed Storm Drain so much, it almost didn't necessarily matter what the next sketch was, because I was already like, well, that was just amazing. And then yeah. after getting through, and, and, I mean, I don't think there was any of the other two sketches remaining would have really fit well here either. You kind of just had to pick a point, pick one to end up being in this slot. And I think that this empty wake one works the best because it's a total change of pace. Like, instead of having this kind of, like, dynamic, you know, the uh, girl, the, the reporter speaking to her cameraman, you've got this single person, she's calling her friend, she's she's trying to figure out, you know, this, this single person basically just talking to whoever she can talk to when she's alone by herself. Like, it, it's a good change of pace, I think. I think that's, that's ultimately where this works for me really well, is it, it shifts the focus in its own unique way to still be a unique, interesting story, even if I just was like, oh my god, I hailed Ratma like four minutes ago, and it was so good. But this then kind of immediately makes hail you... Ratma. Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma, of course. Um, immediately makes you pay attention because it's a total shift in yeah. the experience that you just previously had. I I think most... I think to... to, to I think this does suffer for being so close to the storm drain. I think that most of these would suffer and i think the one that wouldn't have suffered they could not have put here right yeah. the like, terror what, or whatever terror. The, yeah, the last terror. one yeah, yeah. yeah. Ter- terror wouldn't have suffered being here cuz it cuz it would have gotten you like fuck yeah fuck yeah. like you know like the ideal way to put this would be storm drain terror the subject and then this one last but this is like kind of a soft end ending, which is the issue. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 this like for would, a this, film, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this would have been a pretty good ending to it because mm-hmm. like she leaves at the end, and is she a is she undead or is she just like what the oh, f- like is, is she that. is she just fucking like beat the fuck up like and just survived it like yeah. There's so much here, and it's super interesting because there's like there's like a necromancer vibe. As well, absolutely like, right like the like, one yeah. guy that comes by the one yeah. guy as soon as he starts speaking I, I was like oh man like he's gonna bring that guy back <laughs> when when, when <laughs> so, started, when, so i did when he started speaking when i turned on subtitles this movie is i was like what is he saying and the subtitles did not add any like yeah. it, it say, they it just say blank. like speaks native language or no 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 like, no no it didn't say anything that was the most it did not say anything, I, it I did not say anything on, on, so, yeah. so in shutter it, note, it said nothing yeah, yeah. my note for that is is he speaking latin because it that it kind of vaguely sound he's, oh, he's speaking hungarian <laughs> really yeah huh that's close enough to latin no, it's, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. Everything's well, close enough to Latin. I was going to say, everything is close enough to Latin, I guess. But <laughs> Just, um, I, how, do I, we feel, how do we feel about the, the zombie? I liked it. I thought I, it was... I, I liked it too. Yeah. The, the, the reveal was the first and only time in this movie where it got me to jump. Yeah, I feel like, like Because I, I was expecting it. I was expecting like a fully headless thing, and the fact that he was yes. half headless is what freaked me out. Um, I was gonna I, jump yeah, regardless. It, was, <laughs> it could it have was, been fully headed or half headless. It was a great monster. Looked great. Yeah. Looked awesome. 
loved the half head, the pieces that fell off, like while he was walking around. Very oh, funny, dude, like, very when scary, when like... the fucking stomach fell out, it was so good and so gross. Yeah. I was well, like, that, oh, that works, yeah, that works so well with the whole idea of like the this this shithead um, uh, mortician that was just like joking around. It's like, yeah, you do seem like the kind of guy who wouldn't necessarily do his job very well. So his intestines <laughs> would fall out if for whatever reason he, he was standing and gravity was in play. Like but the reality is he did a good job because like everything was together in yep. the casket. And like, like he was a good, he was a good mortician. Like that's all he needs. It just needs to be able to lie there in one piece. And yeah, it did. And, but he didn't lie in one piece. He started moving around. And yeah, then... I, I'm sorry. Are you expecting a corpse to move, Elan? <laughs> I expect morticians to do their job at the appropriate level and <laughs> prepare for any scenario. What oh if What if they want a weekend at Bernie's? This person at the wake and just have one last dance with him. Okay, Bobby. Jesus. Would you Would you deny the widow or widower? Alan is there. What? Alan dance? is absolutely not allowed to plan my funeral and or wake <laughs> at yeah, the funeral. <laughs> oh, you would absolutely have eyes open, <laughs> open casket. You would just be be like this, hanging out in and the casket pump, with a beer. Pumping in your hand. is, uh, Alan. I what I need yeah. you to do more than anything else is pump as much blood into my crotch as possible. I need to be rock hard going into the ground. <laughs> absolutely, I got you, Bobby. We need I that rigor mortis to set you. in in the absolute uh, best way possible. <laughs> I just want Bobby to be seen in the best light, okay? Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk about the subject. The subject. So this, uh, I'll be honest, this was my least favorite of the four. Yeah. Um, it wasn't bad, but I think like this type of horror like it just didn't get, it just didn't get me like i never it was never like really super scary and I, like i understand what it's trying to go for but it, it didn't hit me the way that i think it's supposed to and it really dragged for me it w- felt really long and like i don't know if it is the longest i didn't check but it felt long and mm, yeah. I, there were a couple points where i was just like how much longer is this gonna be like i don't really need to watch this for this long i had the highest expectation with the subject because i had heard a lot about this being fucking really really good Mm -hmm. like just online and in our hashtag internet communities and yeah um, this one is rated very highly and the empty wake is rated very low that is like that is the least favorite online that's the one everybody says is the bad one which is weird because i think we all we all are like yeah this is cool i liked it a lot (laughs) yeah uh there i think the i think part of it is because i think passively i got spoiled but like also mm. i don't know how i could have been passively spoiled because like one of the big reveals quote unquote i looked it up i looked at this after i finished watching vhs 94 to see like big reveals is like when when uh when camera face looks in the mirror and realizes that she has a camera face and it was like how how are you even remotely like thinking that that's a big reveal? Of course she has a camera yeah. face. Yeah, like, it's, it's that, so like, obvious. Whole... Yeah, yeah. I I was like I was very interested for the mirror shot because it's just like oh, I wonder like how how the camera face looks and like yeah, not that it's... she has a camera face. Like <laughs> especially well, considering well, I think, you I think see the, the other I guy think, too. I, yeah, I think yeah. the camera face is just like the most obvious version like like the scariest bit of this entire thing is like when you see the girl on the operating table and just like yes. how she's like almost completely bisected and just like randomly full of like weird tech bits it's like and she just keeps that, saying help me help me is this a dream yeah. is this a dream is this yeah. like not even just like the like the little girl with the head is like hi how are you like that's not even like that's not even bad, but like the the most like is I'm dreaming, right? I have to be dreaming is like the most scary bit. Like yeah, and she unplugs yeah. her and you yeah. know yeah, which yeah she does she does the right thing. And mm-hmm. Camera face does the right thing this entire movie, and like even like she just wants to survive. She just wants to live, and like there's nothing wrong with every action she does. Like that's the word. Like and so like I think that's the whole bit is like is like. You can't be mad at her for anything that she does, even when she shoots the Indonesian police, because, like, she's allowed to live. She's still a human being. She just yeah. got, like... They were going to shoot her? her? Yeah. Yep. Is it her fault that she was mutilated by a fucking psychopath? 
absolutely not. Right. Like, Juno's the one other good guy in this entire thing. Like, And he gets stabbed, like, six times. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty brutal. I mean, even that, that, the other bad, the bad guy, you know, of the, like, he's, like, lost all of his control i mean he's a victim too yeah. despite being you know the bad the, the villain right of yeah it, like, this yeah. this sketch the thing that got me with this sketch is this one was by far the most mediocre effects work and it really like it stands out comparatively to yeah. the rest of every other sketch in you this see movie. the you see the budget in this one yes mm-hmm. whereas with ratma you don't there's no issue with budget the Empty Wake looks great. Uh, even in Terror, there's really nothing well, they... I it's mean, 240p, right? I mean... <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> this one, though, is just... It's... There's a lot of moments where you go, yeah, that's that's some mediocre at best CGI. Like, it, it and shines why was in this ways one it shot doesn't in like, need to. Why was this one shining like high depth? Like it looks yeah, like yeah, it looks yeah. so out of place, right? It, it, it feels it stands good, out and that's why it feels ways. so bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, mean, I would thing... say I would say Go that ahead. it is a really good story. Like yeah, sure. I mean I I did like it. It's it's it, was... it, it has a beginning, middle, and end that you feel complete about, like. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, she leaves and she escapes, and who knows what happens next, but, like, that's what you wanted to see happen at the end, and there's something good about that. But, yeah. There's so much fake fire in this, and I, I was like, man. That first shot. We, we of haven't the figured out. And the fire is so yeah, bad. We haven't figured out fire yet, huh? Like, as, as <laughs> like, it's like. Like. Yeah. And, like, I. And I don't hate it. I, I, cause I, I think like, I think that the monster of like the dude, uh, uh, neo human is fun, but yeah, it's just like, not good. Yeah, like, yeah. like it just, it reminds me of someone who's trying to CGI like a eighties prop villain. Yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. The doom sequence is pretty fun though. Loved the Doom sequence, yeah. Well, we Hard love the Doom love sequence. That. Yeah, we love the Doom sequence in Doom. So you know how yeah, right. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting to see that again. So, ooh, mm-hmm. that was nice. Yeah. They jacked the music up. She got a gun hand. I mean, she had a great. grenade at one point too when she ran out of ammo on her gun hand. And then we yeah. saw more bad CGI, which was a little annoying, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, yeah, boys boys let's talk boys. about bobby's favorite thing alt right fuck, fuck the alt right fuck the alt right fuck them hard and fuck them till they die uh this is really fun uh, real poignant be- this last sketch yes yeah even even though it might not even like totally feel like it should it's just very it's this this feels like such a fucking comedy like a horror oh, comedy. Absolutely. I mean, like it, it the it being a comedy is made super obvious when the cop comes and he's like, "Well, you tested it, right? You know how it's all gonna work." And they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like they are planning to blow up a federal building, and they don't even know if it's gonna work. Like they've got. Like, <laughs> I see. I was thinking that this was a comedy at the beginning when they first shoot the guy, and it's like, well. Uh, got that? Cool. Cut. And like, and then it's like leave, and it's like I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? Like, yeah. Well, so I, I had when the they same shot reaction, the second time. Second time. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> I was like, wait. When I saw, <laughs> That's I, the I guy literally was like, yeah, wait a minute. Now, what is happening here? <laughs> they killed that guy already. <laughs> it's it's very good. It's yeah. very fun, and like, I don't like. I don't see a fault in this one. Like this one, I and I, I I legitimately think that this this is the one out of any of them that they could turn into a. This could be a whole movie. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like because they could periodically, like, kill the dude and eventually have the dude go with the guy who's like the main like camera opera, overnight camera operator. Like you don't have to do this. We can be friends. 
Yep. It could be like a, a, the, a, a, a let the right one in type of yeah. movie. Like, yeah, like where like he either lets the one alt right guy go kind of type of thing. Like, plus, like, if this is a whole length movie, you've got like a whole half an hour in the very beginning of them catching the vampire the yeah first time, right like, and you don't even recognize that that like you think the vampire's the bad guy because he's like killed one or two things but he, we don't realize that he's killing all right dudes and all of a sudden you get yeah. this like this is the yeah, best you start plot, seeing an like, iron in cross yeah. and you're very confused <laughs> as to what is happening yeah. Yeah. like there and all of a sudden you, you realize that like, he killed two of our brothers and all of a sudden there's like the nazi symbols because like they <laughs> yep. can afford they can afford nazi iconography i, and, I like, think yeah. them like in a full length waiting for the, the Nazi reveal for when the cop comes in and he says like, Oh, they, it's hair commandant when I'm in yeah. uniform. It's just like, Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like there's, <laughs> yeah, the, oh, they're not the good guys. We've been rooting for the wrong person the whole time is like yeah. very fun. It's and like, like, imagine watching Troll Hunter, but the whole time, they're the baddies the whole time. It, it well, have that kind They of are the baddies the whole time. Well, well, yeah, no, there, there's like a, there could even be a beautiful moment where like, there's like a, there's a part where he's talking to like the overnight guy and he's like, he's like, no, I have a wife. She lets me feed and everything's okay. Like you, you do that thing yeah. where like, like when, when it's her time to go, I will bring her into my flock. And like, that's like a whole moment that they talk about where like the, van, like, they could even make like a queer culture type thing. I was like super into this the entire time and just watching the Nazis die at the end. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed this 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 one. I, yeah. I will say, like, it was not a it was not scary for me at all, but I really no. didn't like it a lot. Yeah, I love how half of the kills are just uh, friendly. Them, yeah, them <laughs> killing each other on accident. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that <laughs> That's plays like even into like, what that <laughs> plays into just how. St- stupid these fucking people yeah. are because like yeah. this movie blatantly goes you're an idiot if you think this is a good if, if you fall into this ideology and we're openly mocking you because this is exactly what would happen if you ran into any form of actual resistance to your nonsense well that's the you, best bit too right because the big be- even in the beginning before the movie starts it's it, one of the one of the things just has fascist filmmakers fuck off it's like all of a sudden yeah. there's this movie at the end it's like yes <laughs> yeah yeah uh so but, i have one question for you guys about this short yes go did you realize it was a vampire before they said the word vampire yes nope didn't okay, I, I didn't either. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I was tired, but I didn't know. I didn't realize. So so here's what... Again, I would be fully transparent. They kill him twice before they save vampires, and I also... My wife has been watching True Blood, and True Blood is, is an allegory for gay culture, like, in... in like, 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 at the time. So, like, I... So, like, they're, they're hitting the same allegory of, like, fuck whatever thing that is transgressional but also a human thing right yeah. whether it's trans people gay people whether it's a different minority race group whatever yada 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 blah 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 so the second time they killed them i was like oh shit it's a fucking vampire okay cool whatever and then they did that like they're like we're gonna bomb it i was like oh fuck this is like the whole oklahoma city bombing but they're gonna use a vampire to do it like and like then all of a sudden like a couple of things later, like it's a fucking vampire, and I was like, "Ha ha, got it." Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure if they were going like, I was leaning more into like some sort of like deep demonic route instead. Mm, yeah. So like, I wasn't quite sure. I didn't realize it was vampire until yeah, until they just made it help, crazy obvious. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's I think it's fun to keep it open minded. I think a lot. I think it's I think. If I wasn't currently engrossed in that type of media, I wouldn't have got it. But yeah, yeah. It nice. the reveal of this being a vampire had the same kind of energy as like the whitest kids you know, uh, the Lincoln sketch <laughs> yeah. when he's oh watching. God. They're hammering oh, my shit, butt. Hamlet. It's he's a fucking ha- vampire. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's a vampire. I guess like he's got my same... butt. He's hammering my butt. <laughs> it's, it's just so like. Oh, it's a vamp, but like at the same time, the it's also they played say off that, so like, nonchalantly, oh, and I, okay. I love that. I'm, I guess that yeah. makes sense. Um, like, what is this world where like they captured a vampire somehow, yeah. right? Yeah, and 
the fact that it is a vampire and that they kind of understand what's going to happen despite not testing it's like how many vampires are there like what kind of what kind of yeah. alternate universe is this there Where... this <laughs> The common theme of these sketches is it does make you ask questions about the wider world of yeah. these sketches, but it's, and that where, and at the same time you could say, well, if you have a bunch of questions, doesn't that mean these could be full length movies? And it's like, yeah, I think terror could be, you could maybe push Ratma. Maybe. I think that would maybe oversay it's welcome if it tried to go a full the 90. most Ratma could do is like a 45 minute like night gallery episode yeah. like i, I could think, see that yeah. working yeah but like it's I, I love it when a when any media makes me go well what about this in this world and not in the like narrative dissonance way but in the like if if a then what about b c d and e like what's yeah. going on over here i, I, I and think... this short really hammers that home a lot i think that in the meta narrative this and mm. the meta narrative really do have legs to it because you could watch a movie where like you're like you're going through and there's a bunch of static TVs and you're like what the fuck is happening like at and like at first you think it's that but then they turn it into like even like a third thing right step one you're like oh it's drugs step two it's like oh cool there's a cult step three the cult is right like yeah. that is a fun <laughs> little bit like. That you could do in a in a found footage movie, and this is another one that you could do in a really found cool found footage movie. Like the other ones, it's like this is ex- this is the legs that these have, and that's fine, and they're really good for the legs that they have. Except for again the subject, which I think you you is probably better suited to a video game. Period. Like it's even shot I like a video that. game. Yeah. Half the time. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of video games, what 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 would you fucking rate rate these bad boys? Well, how and do we rate movies? That's a great goddamn question, Corbin. We rate these zero to five with half points allowed. So zero point five, one point five, two point five, three point five, four point five, and even five is the max allowed. With unlikely an additional six, seven, eight points allowed (laughs) alan how would you rate this movie so this film for me ends up at a three out of five i think it's just a little tick above average and i say that because i I express that the interstitial story didn't do much for me it 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 exists to drive us seeing another short But other than that, it doesn't have much connective tissue, and I don't like that. I I also, the other thing about just in this whole thing in general is when we finish the first sketch, one of the last notes I have is, I wonder if they're going to try to tie this all together. And that, to me, feels like a wasted opportunity that they didn't try and tie these together into one conclusive narrative. Now, they kind of avoid that by being like, we make snuff films, and this is... This is just a random thing we found. Woo, spoopy. To me, that's that's a misstep overall. Because I think if you... I think that there is a world where you take four segmented 15 to 25 minute horror scenes and turn them into something that connects through and at the very end. It just feels like a wasted opportunity. I also think the subject is just a super low point for me. That is the one where Bobby is, has mentioned this before. The urge to pick up your phone was at a <laughs> max for me. I was paying attention in Ratma. I was paying attention in The Empty Wake. I was paying attention in Terror. And I didn't give a shit about uh, the subject. It just exists. And it's such a like distinct low point for me with that specific short that I couldn't necessarily push this into the, like, above-average territory. To me, it just sinks into average for those two big mistakes. Or slightly above average, I should say, at a three. Right. Okay. Um, you know, I agree with a lot of that. I am a little bit higher at a 3.5. I, I quite enjoyed a lot of it, and a lot of it being those those three segments that we seem to have agreed upon as being like the favored segments. 
Uh, yeah. Those are my three favorites. Uh, one of them in particular, uh, the the Storm Drain, uh, Hail Ratma, I Hail thought Ratma. was just perfectly done. I would rate that one segment like a four and a half, probably. Like, that was just incredible. Um, but I also didn't really care for the subject. I think I might have if it was like five or ten minutes shorter. I, again, I don't know how long it was, but it felt so long. It just dragged for me. <laughs> However long it was, it needed to be at least it five minutes It needed to be minutes five shorter. minutes shorter. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I don't know how long it was, but it, it was too long. Too long. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, and l- I am a big fan of the VHS franchise, but the interstitial story this time, like, it just did not grab me. I think they reached a little bit too far and tried to make it, make it too complicated. And that actually pulled me out a little bit because... With anthologies in general, going all the way back to, like, Creepshow, I just want a quick little something in between and, like, get me into the next short because I'm just here to see, like, quick bites of interesting horror that wouldn't last for a whole movie. That's what I want. And, you know, spending five minutes between shorts, like, it's just too long. I It, it was just not interesting enough for that amount of time. Um, so for me, you know, that all kind of adds up, and it, it comes out to a three and a half. I think, for me, personally, I think what I'm going to say is I'm actually going to agree with Ellen that a three and a, a three, three out of five is the move. Um, I liked it, but I liked it at the same level that I liked our last review, Bodies, 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 so I can't rate it higher than that. There were some really high points and some really, like, points that really drag. Again... I think that we're the weirdos in the horror community. I think the subject was not as good as it could have been. It's very fun, super interesting, and like also incredibly Japanese horror. Like, like that's fine and great, but it just it's just not enough, and um, it just kind of slowly tapers off. Right, terror is fun. But it's not scary. And like the the meta story, like everybody says, it, it, it just slowly tapers off. Where like by the end of it, you're just like, that's the ending you've decided to go with. It just doesn't hit you as much. And like, but it hits so hard so early. And like, it's fun throughout. It's just like, man, like I didn't, I will fully admit that like I wasn't like checking my phone super hard. But, like, at the same time, there were those moments of just, like, like, hmm, what's going on on Discord? <laughs> like, <laughs> while I was watching periodically. So, three out of five. But! That's not the only thing we do on this show. The other thing we do is discuss whether or not a movie is essential to horror as a whole. Uh, for anybody that skipped ahead to this portion, this is spoiler-free. And our scores, as of so far, are a 3 out of 5 from both Alan and Bobby, and a 3.5 from myself. Um, we'll just re- repeat the order. Alan, is this movie essential to horror? This one is a weird one. I, If we were talking the essentiality on a, a story-by-story basis... Uh, Ratma, 100%, I'm, I'd go out on the boat. That's essential. That shit's wonderful. It's a perfect encapsulation of what found footage is in horror. And it's wonderful. The other three, though, I don't know that they get to that level for me. The t- terror might for its own reasons. So, by saying that, as a whole, no, I don't think that this movie is essential. I think one maybe two of these scenes one a hundred percent i would say i'm gonna go out on a limb and say is essential two maybe but if half of your film is is something that needs to be seen for horror and the other half is not then i don't think that you cross into the the totality of essentiality i don't i just don't think that you you cross that barrier so for me it's 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 a tough call but i i have to just say no on this one I think it it just doesn't it doesn't cross into that territory for me. It's a no for me. <laughs> I liked it. 
I gave it the best score out of the three of us. I agree that Suru Drain, Hail Ratma, is Hail Ratma. probably Hail Ratma. essential on its own. And if you're really, really, really into found footage, I mean, you've probably watched or will watch VHS 94 in general, but uh, this is not the best uh, VHS movie out of the four. I don't think it will be the one that is most highly remembered. Um, it was pretty good. Certainly not the worst VHS. <laughs> but I just don't think that it gets there. And every VHS compilation, it, there's at least one short that is just really, really good. And if you added, like, those four, like, the one from each one, that, and you made one movie, I mean, that movie, that's an easy yes. But... <laughs> This isn't that movie, so for me, it's a no. <laughs> I want to start by yeah. saying, Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma, of course. That being said, no, this movie's not essential. Um, it just isn't. Uh, I think even if movies that spawn from VHS 94 become essential, those movies become essential in their own right, period. Um, and I think that even though this movie has a, has some really high points, right? Hail Ratma, one more time. Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma. Hail Ratma. And Not even, too. and even, hey, fuck the alt-right. Fuck the alt-right, I'll join you. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Does. Thank you, thank uh, you. Uh, there is a little bit of just low bits that you're just like okay whatever fine it is like it's a fun really anthology movie it's really fun like creep show 2 is really fun but yeah. creep show 2 an essential movie does yeah. not make <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> spoilers but yeah. I, I love creep show 2 but <laughs> yeah I, I i i like the little like uh the little fucking uh pool tarp that eats people it's really fun but it's not it's, a, it's my not a, it's my favorite creep show short between yeah, the two of them yeah. like. <laughs> it's it's not an essential movie so yeah. no it's not essential at all but <laughs> speaking of pool tarps where can we find you guys what's your handles <laughs> I'm so shocked that it wasn't speaking of Ratma. The fact that it wasn't makes me sad. If I'm being totally honest, well, I would, I would never, I would never make my god be yeah. the be just the in a side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Hail fair. Ratma! I'm, by yeah, the way, guys, I'm can we come? Can we real quick, real quick, one more? Can we get a one more? Hail Ratma! Hail Ratma! Hail Ratma! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you can find me anywhere hailing Ratma at Corbang Ring on Twitter and Instagram. I like to tweet about Destiny Halo and Warhammer, and I am pretty active on my alternate account, which is at Bolters underscore Bourbon, where I talk about liquor and you Warhammer. You finally did it. You I finally did it. did it. Alan pressured me. I started actually posting about bourbon on there and whiskey. It's not that I haven't been drinking. I just haven't been taking pictures. <laughs> Um, so follow me at either of those places. What have I been doing on the side? Warhammer, Destiny, Diablo, uh, waiting for my second child to be born. It's kind of just, just hanging out, you know? Um, but it's been a great time. So follow me there. Hail Ratma. Thank you. <laughs> you can find me at a seal punter where I also am hailing Ratma. Um, I, uh, have, I, I, so I mentioned there's 25 hours left in my book the last time we met. There are now, like, eight hours left in my book, because I've just been constantly listening to it, because they're finally wrapping up a lot of shit. Um, it's a grand old time. Uh, The Black Prism is the first book in the series. You should listen to it if you like interesting little fantasy books. Um, other than that... Little, little he says. Remember, the book is little, 30 hours. There's five long. novels, and they're all 30-something <laughs> hours apiece to listen to. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. But that's that's been largely it for me. That and uh, I just keep hunting monsters. You know? That's that's it. Hunting monsters on, on, on Monster Hunter. That's it. You can find me at twitch.tv slash threadweenie. All of my relevant socials are there. Although I have not posted in roughly a week at time of recording. Uh, I have, at, at the very least, time of recording, uh, I have uh, increased my MMR by 
nine million points in uh in uh in warner brothers multiverses other than that i've been chilling i've been hanging out i've been focusing on my life and my work and my wife uh other than that a little bit of little bit of Warhammer, all of that, just been really focusing. I'm trying to make sure that, again, please, God, put one in the chat if you just don't need us to do anything with Resident Evil, the show on Netflix. I am it's begging late, you, Bobby. fans. <laughs> I am begging you. I, If anything, listen, we get, we get two ones on this episode and i will be able to convince them that we can just watch another movie it can just happen please please you can do please. corbin and i are too much of too too big a stands of resident evil <laughs> you can find the podcast anywhere at essential scares it's active on twitter facebook and instagram please and in the bios to all of our socials is a link to our discord where you can send bobby a personal message to Please not let us do the Netflix Please! versus Evil show. But unfortunately for Bobby, that's it for this week. Next week, we review Netflix's Resident Evil. <laughs> no! no, God, no, God. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the show, share it with your friends and family. Make sure you rate and subscribe. Um, and as a reminder, next week we are reviewing Netflix's Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> Thank you to Alan and Bobby. I have been your host, Corbin. Hail Rapa. Hail Rapa, baby. <laughs> <laughs>